Oh, him. Boy, I pray that the Lord has helped you this morning. Amen. He has helped me uh, in the song service. I'll tell you, I, uh, he moved. And boy, I tell you, ain't you glad that you still feel the Lord move? Amen. Amen. I'm glad. I'm glad he was doing something in my heart. Amen. Amen. I, I, boy, that just that that helps me know that I'm saved. Amen. Is that when he begins to move, that I can feel him move. Amen. And I'm glad of that this morning. Amen. If you've not got any help this morning, you still can get some. Amen. Yes, uh, listen, if you need to come to the altar while I'm preaching, it will not be out of order. Uh, guess what? I won't quit preaching. Somebody will come and pray with yeah. you. Amen. Amen. Uh, and it'll be all right. Amen. It'll be just fine. It won't be the first time that's ever happened. Hopefully it won't be the last time. Let's turn our Bible and go to the book of 1 Chronicles. 1 Chronicles chapter 29 this morning as we stand our feet. 1 Chronicles chapter 29. I feel like I need to preach this morning, so that's what I'm going to do. I, I, I still feel led to do this. I am aware of the time. I, and I know some folk have got some help and come to all, but I believe there's some folk that uh, need the Word of God. Listen, it, it, uh, uh, sometimes it ain't out of order when God moves like it has. And uh, we just expand on the Scripture and go home. There's nothing out of order about that. Uh, but I feel like we need to preach this morning. May the Lord give us the message. And I uh, just need to preach this morning uh, out of First Chronicles chapter uh, 29. Now in this passage of Scripture we find a time uh, when David, when Solomon is actually fixing to become king uh, and uh, David has uh, laid in store and for the house of God and he's talking about building uh, the house of God. They're worshiping in the tabernacle uh, at this time and God would not let David in that build the temple of God uh, but he would let him gather up and that all the things that it was going to take uh, and that to build the house of God. Uh, but in 1 Chronicles chapter 29, uh, look in verse 16. Here David is praying and he says, O Lord our God, all this store that we have prepared to build thee an house for thine holy name cometh of thine hand and is all thine own. And I know also, O my God, that thou triest the heart and hast pleasure in uprightness. Amen. As for me, in the uprightness of my heart, I have willingly offered all these things, and now have I seen with joy thy people, which are present here, to offer willingly uh, unto thee. Boy, it's a good thing to offer willingly unto uh, the Lord. Verse 18, O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, our fathers, keep this forever in the imagination of the thoughts of the heart of thy people, and prepare their heart unto thee. And give unto Solomon, my son, a perfect heart to keep thy commandments and thy testimonies and thy statutes and to do all these things. Now can I stop right here and say what a wonderful prayer for a daddy to have for his son. What did he say? Lord, give my son a perfect heart to keep thy commandments and thy testimonies and thy statutes. Well, it's a good prayer for you moms and dads to have about your children. Both that follow God and whatever it may be, that follow the Word of God. And he said, uh, on down through there, and to do all these things and to build the palace for the which I have made provision. And David said to all the congregation, Now bless the Lord your God. And all the congregation blessed the Lord God of their fathers and bowed down their heads and worshiped the Lord. And the King, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you Heavenly this morning. Father, Father God, and that again, we thank you for the wonderful mercy that you've given us. But God, Lord, we just need a touch from you this God. morning. God, and Lord, I'm just begging of you to come God by and, to and speak to God. hearts, to continue but to God, do that. To Lord, I know that you spoke God, to hearts God, already God, this morning. And God, I pray that, Lord, that you'd continue to do that. Lord, while we preach, I'm going to need you. God, we're unworthy this morning. God, we're just feeble. And, Lord, just every way this morning, we're just feeble before you. And, God, I, I, I make, uh, uh, Lord, uh, this morning this acknowledgement that without you, uh, Lord, that I can do nothing. And Lord, I pray that these dear people would get some help in that from the Word of God. And Lord, that you would just continue to help them. 
And Lord, that if there's somebody here lost, that you would save them and bring them that to a place of repentance that they might be saved this morning. God, we ask this morning, meet with us now. And God, we're just going to thank you for all that you've done. Let folk be very, very attentive to the Word of God this morning. Lord, we're not in a hurry. We want you to continue to tarry with us this morning. And God, we're begging for your help now. Save that sinner's news tale for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can be seated this morning. As David is making that prayer and that for Solomon and to build the house of God, uh, he begins to talk about the people of God in verse 18. And he says, O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, our Father, Keep this forever in the imagination of the thoughts of the heart of thy people. And then he makes a statement right here and says, And prepare their heart unto thee. And this past week I thought about a lot of things. I thought about sometimes how aggravated the preacher gets at people because they don't do right. Amen. I, I think about a lot of times, boy, if I could say this or... Or do this if, if uh, you know, I, I thought about preaching a message on how to be a good church member. And I thought, boy, that would be good, and that's what we need. And I thought about, well, I could preach on that uh, because of sin, creep sin, uh, uh, it's going to lead you astray and put you in the wrong way. And that would be a good message to preach. Back at the end of the week, as the Lord began to speak to my heart about that, and uh, he began to show me something. And here's what I want to preach on. Uh, uh, the thought until the Lord does a work in your heart. I can preach till I'm blue in the face. Until the Lord does a work in your heart, we can sing every song out of the red back book and every good song that has ever been sung. Uh, but until God comes and does something in your heart, it's not going to make a difference. Now I understand that he works through preaching and he works through singing. I, I understand those things. But what I'm saying is that a lot of times that uh, we as God's people, we want folk to do right. We uh, want folk to get saved. We want folk to act right. But I'm just going to tell you until God uh, uh, and that deals with somebody's heart, uh, uh, you're not going to change this Amen. Way. Uh, listen, uh, uh, for salvation, it takes a changed heart. Right. Uh, God deals with the heart in salvation. Uh, what was it that He said in Romans chapter 10? Uh, he said, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made right. unto salvation. Amen. In Acts chapter 8, when Philip is preaching to the eunuch over there, out uh, of uh, Alabama, Chapter 53, uh, uh, and as they're going along their way, uh, and the eunuch said, See, here's some water. Uh, uh, what doth hinder me from being baptized? Uh, and here's what Philip said. Philip said, uh, uh, Thou mayest be baptized uh, if thou believest uh, with all thine heart. And so it takes believing with your heart to be saved this morning. <coughs> Can I tell you this morning that once you get saved, you'll have a changed heart. Amen. Uh, now, I'm talking about God preparing your heart this morning. He talks about in Ezekiel chapter 11, uh, when He talks about the children of Israel and them getting right, He said, And I'll give unto them one heart, uh, and will put a new spirit within you, uh, and will take out the stony heart of their flesh, uh, and give them a heart of flesh. What's He talking about? A heart that He could touch, and that He could mold, and that He could shape. A heart that's tender, and I'm going to deal with that I, I, just here in a minute. He, he talked about over there to uh, King Josiah in 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 34 when he came to the Word of God and the Word of God was brought before him that he repented of some things uh, and the Lord told him, he said, Because thine heart was tender, thou didst humble thyself before the Lord. You know the problem I think that we as the children of God have a lot of times, we don't have tender heart for the things of God. Well, I want my heart to be in place to where it can hear from God and be touched by God. 
If I want to be able to come in and to a service site this morning uh, uh, and be able to enjoy it uh, uh, from the very first song that was sung uh, uh, all the way up to the time that we say amen and go home, I don't want to have to come to the altar uh, and get right, let God deal with me uh, and then enjoy the service. Hey, uh, I want to enjoy it from the beginning. Amen. amen. So I just want to preach this morning until God does a work in your heart. Can I tell you until God does a work in your heart, you're never going to be good for Him. What do you mean until God does a work in my heart? Let me, let me put it to you another way. Until you let God do a work in your heart. He wants to do something for you this morning. The God of heaven is concerned about you and loves you. Can I say number one, first of all, until you let the God of heaven do a work in your heart, You'll have no desire for the things of God. Well, I'm here, preacher. I'm here this morning. Some of you come because you's made to come. Yeah. Hey, I've done that a lot growing up. Amen. Hey, listen, some of you come because you's expected to come. And you wanted to see some folk. And I thought, why did we come this morning? Why did we come to the house of God and back to be here today? Was it because we were made? Was it because we, we wanted to see somebody else? Or did we come and that for a hope uh, and that to learn from the Word of God uh, and that to worship uh, uh, the Lord of glory this morning? Why did we come? As your preacher, sometimes I come simply because it's my job to be here. Mm -hmm. Now it's shame on the preacher this morning. Amen. But he said we're to desire some of the things of God. I believe one of the things that we're to desire this morning when God works in our heart, I'm going to sound like a broken record, by the way, is the Word of God. Yeah. Amen. What did he say in 1 Peter chapter 2? I believe it was. He said in verse 2, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the Word that you may grow yeah. thereby. You get saved and God changes your heart, you're to desire the Word of God. But I'm going to tell you, when the world begins to creep in and your heart begins to harden just a little bit, and then it'll harden a little more. Can I ask you something this morning? When's the last time you read your Bible at home? Come on. If, if I come to you and somebody is just done worried now, <laughs> I wouldn't do it to you. Well, when's the last time? If you've read your Bible at home, you can just move right along on this message, can't you? Yeah, amen. Well, when's the last time? Can I tell you something? You said, Preacher, that, that old boring book, I'm going to tell you something. If you had fall in love with the God of this book, amen. you'd fall in love with this book. Amen. He said, Love the Lord thy God with all thy what? What? Heart. That's right. Heart. Soul and mind. Listen this morning. I, I'm telling you, He said, And prepare their heart. And to thee, God wants to do something for you. But do you desire the things of God? Do you desire a service like we had this morning? Amen. Listen, not all the time do we come to church and God comes by and meets with us. Right. Not, not like that. Let me say that. I, I'm determined that if you come with a heart open unto God, that He will meet with you. Amen. Amen. I'm determined of that, that you'll get what you need uh, uh, out of God's Word uh, uh, from His house. You'll get it. Hey, but listen, how's your heart uh, toward the Word of God this morning? I'm going to tell you, do you read it at home? Can I ask you why you don't come to Sunday school? Come on. Why don't you come? Most of you get up and got to be at work. At a, at a, I mean, we start at 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Most of you got to be at work at 7 or 8 o'clock in the morning. I, I, but yet you can't come to Sunday school. You're meddling. But I ain't meddling. I'm just trying to show you that you don't love the Word of God like you say you do. If you love the Word of God, I also believe you'd come to Sunday school. Right. Are you mad? I ain't mad. I'm hurt this morning uh, and I'm broken hearted uh, uh, because I see the road uh, that you're headed down. Amen. I understand we get hindered. I'm not talking about being hindered. I'm not talking about sickness. I'm not talking about taking care of folk in our family that requires that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just really talking about being lazy and letting your heart get hardened out toward the things of God. Amen. Right. That's what I'm talking about this right. morning. Come on. 
Press on, I sat and I watched. You know, I, I remember Brother Langston used to say, you know the thing about people before they quit church is they start missing church. That's like them old cars. They don't do this much today. Either car will run or it'll quit. It'll run or it ain't going to run. But you, you know, you take my old truck right now, it's a missing on about two different cylinders, depending on which I believe it's cylinder five and cylinder six. I believe it's missing on both of them. Now, if I let that thing go on, it probably won't get me home one day. What I'm saying, you know them old cars when they used to miss and, 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 and some of y'all don't even know what I'm talking about when I talk about points and stuff. Uh, but them points would burn out uh, and all those things you might have to file them back down to make them run. Uh, but listen, you know what would happen before they quit? They'd start missing. You know what I've learned about people before they quit God? They just start missing. You miss them in the house of God. You know one of the first things you'll do if you were ever faithful to read your Bible before you quit God, is you'll lay your Bible down and you'll quit reading it at home. How am I doing this morning? Come on. Come on. Press on, brother. You just need to grow in the Word of God, study the Word of God, fall in love with the Word of God. For in it, it told us and tells us how to get saved if you're lost, but in it, it tells us that we are saved and kept. How about church? You know, if you go back to verse 3 in this chapter right here, in ver of chapter 29 in the text, David said, Moreover, because I have set my affection to the house of my God. How much have we fell in love with church? Church itself. Now, I'm afraid a lot of folk, are, they think church itself is going to get them to heaven. Religion is not going to get you to heaven. Amen. It ain't going to get you there. Church cannot get you there. Unity Baptist Church, uh, being a member of this church, cannot in any shape, form, or fashion get you to heaven. But we want to point you to the one who can. And that's the blessed Lord Jesus Christ this morning. But David said that I've set my affection. Can I tell you that you need church this morning? I, I, I mean, maybe you're different than me, uh, uh, but I need church. I do. I need fellowship. With Amen. you. I need fellowship with the people of God. Yeah. You know why? Because I find myself that if I'm not fellowshipping with you, I'm going to be fellowshipping with the wrong thing. Amen. Amen. Right. Psalms chapter 27. David said this, One thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and inquire in His temple. He said, this is the one thing I've desired. Now remember, I was talking about your desire, the things of God. David said, this is one thing I've desired of the Lord, that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Now, I'm, I'm not always done things right. I've not always been right with the Lord. Now, there's been times that I've been cold and indifferent, but there's one thing that I can say, I've never been out of church. Not since the day that I was born. Mama took us to church, raised us in church. After we got married, me and my wife never talked about uh, what we were going to do come Sunday. Uh, we never, I don't believe we've ever had that discussion in our home. What are we going to do come Praise Sunday? God. Yeah. Come on. Some of you all have raised your children that way. And then some of you have raised your children and it's a hit or miss kind of thing. Why? You've not set your affection to the house of God. Man, if I miss, and you say, Preacher, you're just weak-minded and weak spirit. Maybe I am, and maybe I just need it more than you do. I, I, but I need to come to church. I, I need to worship. I, I, I need to meet with the Lord and His people. David talks about in Psalms 84, for a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. He said, one day with you, Lord, in worship. He said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Amen. I preach on church a lot, it seems, to try to help you be faithful. 
And listen, I, I'm not against sports. I'm not against your children doing things. Uh, uh, but I'm telling you, you need to give them something that's going to last. Uh, uh, listen, I played baseball growing up. I, I, I wasn't that good at it. I enjoyed it. Uh, uh, but listen, it didn't do nothing for me. Uh, uh, listen, my mom and dad taking me to church, uh, that done more for me in this life uh, uh, than anything that ever could happen. I'm just saying this morning, you're going to have to get your heart right with the Lord. Desires. Desires. How's the desire in your heart? David said, One thing I've desired, I'll seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Until our heart gets right. Until we let the Lord deal with our heart. Can I ask you how it is about seeing other folks saved? You know, the Apostle Paul said, Brethren, my heart's desire and prior to God for Israel is this, is that they might be saved. Lord hadn't bothered me in a long time about somebody's salvation until last night. Oh, I pray for folk to get saved. I, I really do. I pray for folk to get saved. But as we were sitting there uh, and eating supper last night, we, we, me and my wife had went out and uh, we were sitting there and, and, and a young lady that waits on us, now you can tell that we go there too much because she knows our name. And when that, she can call you by name, that's probably too much. Amen. And uh, so she's always happy to see us. And, and I know that I've left her some tracks there on the table. And uh, us uh, still being in that rented vehicle, I don't even know if we got any tracks in there right now. I think we do. My wife's shaking her head. Yes, we do. So shame on me. But I did not have a shirt pocket. I'm used to wearing a, 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 a shirt that's got a pocket on it. I didn't have no horror for tracks. Well, I can remember as we got up to leave, I, I, I can remember that the Lord disturbed me about her salvation. What's the next time God ever done you like that? I mean, bothered you about somebody else's salvation. I mean, just not in pice. And I mean, I mean, there's a lot of times we'll go through a drive through window. Uh, we might hand that young lady or that young man. Uh, I say, here, take this and read it when you have a little time uh, and something like that. But I, I'm telling you, when I got up from the table, I, I, I was genuinely concerned about where she was going to spend eternity. Hadn't been that way in a long time. Why is that, preacher? God dealt with my heart, you see. You know, Paul went even as far as to say in Romans chapter 9, he said, For I, 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 it, for I could wish that myself were cursed from Christ for my brethren, for my kinsmen, according to the flesh. What's he saying? He's saying, I, I, If I could be cut off from Christ, he said, I, I, I wish that all Israel could get saved. But our heart, our heart, God's got to deal with this thing. And you've got to let Him. David prayed for the children of Israel. He said, and prepare their heart unto thee. So preacher, I have a desire for folk to be saved. I want to see them get saved. And in my heart, I want to see them get saved. And what are we doing? What are we doing for them to be saved? Lord Jesus told His disciples in John chapter 4, Say, Not you there yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, Lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white, all ready to harvest. The Lord said four months. Why is He talking about four months? He's talking about sowing something, and then in four months you can go out and reap it. He said, Don't say they're four months, and then you can go find harvest. He said, They're already ready. You'll run into folk that's lost every day. Amen. If you get out of your house and maybe even in your house. But our heart needs to be prepared. Our heart. How are you toward lost folk? Do we care? I, I, do you ever drive down the interstate and, and see all them headlights coming at you and wonder how many of them souls that send them vehicles over are saved? Do you think that? I think that way. I think that way. I remember sitting in Knoxville. Was it at Level Road or somewhere up there and traffic cut in front of you and you go up there and you just never see that much traffic down here and I mean traffic everywhere. And I can just remember at one time, there's nothing spiritual about me, don't, don't misunderstand. But I'm just saying it's traffic, was two lanes of traffic was turning in front of me this way and coming up by the bridge that I was sitting on and, and you'd watch people and I'd say, you reckon they go to church? Reckon they're saying? Reckon, I mean, that's just the way my mind thinks. You know, the shame of it is sometimes we think that way, but what do we do about it? 
The Lord told Legion in Mark chapter 5, when he was coming to the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. But howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and hath compassion on thee. And if you go on and read that, you'll find out that he done just that. But we need to have a heart and that prepared to do the things of God. Where's your heart at for the Lord? How about sin? I'm fixing the clothes. Is there some sin in there that needs to be dealt with? I believe that God's tried to convict some folk and tried to convince some folk about some things this morning. Whether it's you just need to draw clothes, you just need to get right with Him, just fix some things between you and Him. I believe He's tried to do that. And a lot of people has given in or come and done what needs to be done. But some have not. Let Him work with your heart. Let Him work with your heart. Let's bow our heads this morning across the house. We come and get a verse of invitation this morning. Has God been trying to work on your heart? Do some things in your heart? Listen, why don't you let Him work? Why don't you just let your heart be tender this morning? Why don't you let your heart just... Be tendered by the Lord this morning. And let Him deal with you. And you deal with Him. Listen, if you've not done bi- listen, if you've not done business with Him this morning, listen, you sure can. You sure can. God's, listen, God's tried to tarry with us and help us. Listen, He just wants to help your heart this morning. He just wants to help your heart. Heavenly Father.